It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and passing the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you are building storage for files for a data pipeline on Google Cloud. You want to support JSON files. The schema of these files will occasionally change. Your analyst teams will use running aggregate ANSI SQL queries on this data. What should you do? The key part of the question is that we need to support JSON files. It is going to change in schema for different data that is going to come. And on the final data, we have to be able to run SQL queries. With these key requirements, let's see which of the options suit us the best. Option A suggests that we use BigQuery for storage and provide the format files for data upload. And as and when you do the upload, also provide the corresponding format files. Will BigQuery as an option work for us? Looking at the flowchart to choose the storage, we can see that on the far left is structure and SQL with BigQuery as a part of it. So for us, BigQuery is a great option because we want to run SQL queries on the final data. So far, so good. What about providing the format files each time we upload the data? In the GCP console, there is a way in which you can specify the schema for each of the fields. So you can give a name for the field, you can give a type and whether it's nullable or not, and you can keep adding these each time. If you don't want to do this via the console, you can also do it via the BQ command line tool. You can provide a source format along with the data that you're going to import. So this seems like a possible option. However, the problem for us with this approach is that every time we upload the data, we will have to identify the appropriate schema and attach that along with that upload command. This is obviously cumbersome and it is not going to scale very well for us. Therefore, we are going to eliminate option A. Option B suggests that we again use BigQuery, but we select an option called automatically detect in the schema section while importing the data. Let's see how that is possible. In the console, when we choose a file, in this case, as soon as I chose .json, the file format automatically became JSON uh, file format in the console by itself. Then there is an option called auto detect in the schema, which if we select, it will automatically identify the schema in the JSON file and import the table accordingly. In this case, I have imported a file called b underscore bk.json with different schema. Each of the JSON entries are going to be one single line. And you can see that with the name C and D, you also have a salary while with the name E, we don't have a salary. So this is different schema and BigQuery is still able to import that by just nullifying the field salary. So this works and BigQuery is able to auto detect the schema, which will take care of the changing schema. And we already know that BigQuery supports SQL. So this seems like a workable option and therefore we are going to keep it aside because we might have some other option which is even better. So far let's bank this and move on to option C. Option C suggests that we use cloud storage and then from BigQuery you link the data in, these, in this file which is on cloud storage as a temporary table. We can also turn on automatically detect option in the schema. We already know that the automatically detect option is fairly good, that worked for us. 
And cloud storage is able to store JSON files. It can store any kind of data. So using cloud storage, not a bad idea, it will work. Turning on automatically select also would work. The option about linking the data as temporary tables though has some issues. A temporary table in BigQuery is typically used to cache query results. It has about a lifetime of 24 hours and you can't share it with other users using the IAM policies, nor is it accessible via the general access mechanisms like the console or PQ. Therefore, if we took this option, your analyst teams won't be able to run SQL queries on this data because they're temporary tables that they don't have access to. Therefore, this option will fail us and we have to eliminate option C. How about option D? Option D suggests that we use cloud storage for storing the files, which we said is possible. Cloud storage can easily store JSON files and that's okay. It also suggests that we turn on automatically detect, which we already saw is a workable option. How about the third part of this, which is to link the data as permanent tables in BigQuery. Since these are permanent and not temporary, we have the option of sharing them with other users using IAM permissions. They come in as a regular BigQuery table, except that it is linked to storage that is on cloud storage. So analysts will be able to run queries on this data, on this linked permanent table. Therefore, that requirement is met. So this seems like a workable option. However, it wouldn't be a recommended practice because the data in this file is not going to change often. Once imported or once the file is there, it's just going to remain as is. External tables are recommended for approaches or situations where you've got small tables and this data changes often. For us, it would be a much better option to have all the data directly in BigQuery because the, uh, the format is suited for large number of reads and for running SQL queries on that. In linking this to an external storage, there could also be potential drop in speed. Hence, even though this might be a workable option, it is not the preferred option and therefore we will eliminate D and go with the best option we have so far, which is option B. Option B is to continue to use Big Query for storage and to import the schema or import the data with the schema chosen as automatically detect. And as we saw, even with changing schema, it is able to put in or create the appropriate columns. All right, now it's time for you to like, share, comment and subscribe. Go ahead, do that right now, because there's loads of great content coming up for learning Google Cloud and preparing for the certifications. Mm -hmm.